Hello, Caviar Dreamers. Hi, Caviar Dreamers. We are back with somebody so fabulous. I'm a little obsessed with her. I'm completely obsessed with her. I'm going to be honest. She might be the one thing that got me through quarantine. I know. You have one funny mommy. If you guys don't know who she is, Lisa Marie Riley. She, Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie. She is a court stenographer mm -hmm. um, from Brooklyn, and she is absolutely hysterical. She's so, so funny. Yes, and she's the epitome of a caviar dreamer because she took a tragedy, you know, something that was very hard for her family. Her husband had cancer. Yeah. Right, Lexi? Yeah. He, yeah, he's in treatment still, there, but they, she had, her husband had cancer, and to handle it and deal with it, she started an Instagram mm -hmm. as a joke, you know, as something funny. To deal with humor. it. To, yeah, to have humor. And she really, she became an overnight sensation. Overnight She's sensation. funny as hell. I wonder if everyone thought she was really funny as hell. Cause I, I mean, she is funny. And she, she has little kids. Yep, she has over a quarter of a million followers yeah. um, so across their social media platforms. And we're going to have to ask her because she has major people following her, major other funny people, like one of my all-time favorites, Michael Rappaport. Yep, Heather McMahon. Heather McMahon, better known as Heather McMahon to me. But yeah, <laughs> I love her. Jenny McCarthy. Mm-hmm. I mean, power I blondes. See all those power blondes, that's it. I mean, it's, it must feel amazing to know that you've helped a lot of people through quarantine, too. She has a it's lot of true. family humor makes fun of her family, her kids, and it's very relatable. Very, very relatable. So let's get her on right now because we just, we just love her. We just love that Lisa Marie. Is that Hi. <laughs> Hello, my love. I get it. Hi. You look so cute. How cute. Wait, Hi, I, I gotta honey. show you my new boobs. Wait, hold on one second. The law just got new boobs. I don't even have pants on. I love it. I don't. I have my old boobs if you want them. Oh my god, if you saw my boobs, you'd trip over them. Hold on. Did you on the ground? You? I'm wearing them as a, I'm wearing mine as a sandal. <laughs> oh, I got a boob lift and a reduction. Well, you know what? Mine need to be lifted. They need to be lifted to space, okay? I know. Oh my god, that's okay. I know the feeling. By the way, I had granny boobs. I look like I nursed a village. Getting dressed was a disaster. But it's not about me, it's about you. So let's focus on you because you are so damn funny. And I'm sorry I'm late. Had to get out of business calls. Talk about it. I'll, talk about it. I'll talk about you later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I know you are so adorable. And I love the signature clip. The hair clip is very yes. popular. I've had it since eighth grade. I love Because it. I always wore my hair in a ponytail. And finally, I was able to take it down. And I just always put a clip because it gives you a headache, your hair. Yes, it does. Yeah. It squeezes your brain. Yeah. Yous are all dressed up all the time. Good for yous. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That's you know how long it takes me to get ready. Forget it. It's like absolutely. Well, let me tell you something. I saw you in that dress on your page on your on your your new clothing. Yes, that white floor with. Good for you. I fucking love it. You're so sweet. We've had our little we've had our little clothing line for a while. I don't you know. Love unfortunately, it. everything comes in from China and nothing has shipped. Yeah. So. We're, we're out of pocket for a little while with all yeah. our crap that we make, but that's okay. It'll come back. So we're wearing the old <laughs> shit, so it's okay. Old shit still looks good. Old shit looks like new I'm shit. I'm wearing my oh, pajama it. with a sweater, okay? That's good. I, I like it. I like it. I so, can't. First of all, were you born in Brooklyn? Yeah, born and raised in Brooklyn. You, I love you. You crack me up. Okay, so tell me, so you're a court reporter? I'm a court reporter, yep. In which court are you? In Staten Island? Kings County criminal in Brooklyn. Oh, Kings County criminal in Brooklyn. Wow. Yeah. That's scary. Yeah. That was great. Have, I love it. You must have great stories. Yeah. Yeah, of course. You always do. I mean, come on. Look what, look what I'm doing. You know? I, I know. I love it. My best friend is also a court reporter. She's in Supreme. Get out of here. In the city. Oh, get out of here. All my friends, too. They all moved up to Supreme. I didn't take the test or anything because I liked where I was, but I've been off for a while because of my husband, so. Yes. So tell yeah. me, so tell us, I, you know, just cause your story is so fascinating. I think it's so inspiring to so many people because people could take, you know, what, what happened to your husband is terrible, but people could take like yes. a horrible situation and be like, oh, woe is me. And you have taken a horrible situation, inspired so many people have brought so much light and humor to yeah. so, I mean, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. So get just, out of just, here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and everybody just adores you. So tell me what happened. Your husband was diagnosed. How long ago? A long time ago, my husband had a stomach ache. He never went to the doctor. We just figured, all right, you got a stomach ache, got a stomach ache. One day, uh, about oh, well over a year ago, he was walking over, like 
hunched. So his father comes, he goes, oh my God, it's your appendix. Go take it out. Wasn't, he doesn't know what he was talking about. So he went to the doctor. So the doctor said, the hospital hospital was, oh, it's a little thing in and out. We're going to take it. I said, let's just get a second opinion. You never know, which I didn't even know anything about it. We got a second opinion. Turns out it was an eight and a half pound tumor in his stomach connected to all of his organs. Oh my God. I don't know where. And the only reason why he found out about it was because the tumor pinched his intestine and the food couldn't go down or we would have never known. Oh, like it was crazy. like pinching the intestine crazy. So, you know, the doctor told us, honest, we don't know, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. We're going to try to do a surgery, 16 hour surgery, successfully removed the whole tumor, Amazing. took out, you know, a couple of organs with it. Amazing. Then he takes his PET scan, the first one, clean, great. Then he takes his second PET scan after his second round of chemo and it came back worse. So it's not a tumor anymore. It's in his cells and his lymph nodes and his stomach. So now we're just on round three of chemo and it's not going to kill it. It's just going to hopefully stop it from spreading until we figure out, you know. How's he feeling? He's, uh, well, the chemo takes a toll, obviously. Everybody yes. that's on chemo knows how it takes a toll. But um, he's, you know, has his days. He gets, you know, really down about it and whatever. And he's exhausted and, you know, it's just a lot, chemo. It wears you out. It is. It wears you out. Everybody that's on chemo should get a gold medal because it wears you out to a whole nother level. It really does. And, you know, it is what it is. So I could have either, I said, I could either have fell into it and, you know, I cry to myself, I go to myself, I go through it, but I couldn't do that because I have kids and I have a life because Con Edison still wants to get paid. They don't care what you're going through. You know what I'm saying? You know, you still need gas in the car and food on the table. So I said, let me not fall into it because if he sees me like that, then he's going to be even worse. Yes. Yeah. And all the yeah. positivity. So I love that, you know, that you, that the way you dealt with it, you went on Instagram, you became, no, obviously you were always funny because you're freaking hysterical. Like your whole life, were you like the funny girl in school? Were you just like. Supposedly. Who supposedly. Knew? I didn't know. <laughs> you supposedly, didn't know? I had no idea. The page was started the first day he started chemo because my sister goes instead of a group text message, let's do Instagram. It was only my family. And then all of a sudden, more people know you. And here I am sitting on here with yous. You know what I mean? I didn't <laughs> and then that's it. That's it. I mean, that is so funny. I mean, Lexi's like, you know, she's like, you got to follow her. She's the funny. I was like, all right. Hilarious. I mean, you are just absolutely just You've so. So many of us going through quarantine. It's like, I can't even imagine it. I can't even imagine it. Did you talk? I can't believe that people even think like, this is funny. No, because you're so authentically yes. yourself. I mean, you're quintessential New York. Your voice is no quintessential filter. New York. I have no, no filter. filter. I, no. I mean, your I family have. must be so proud of you. Your husband must. I mean, you have to be the light of his life. He must be so like, oh my god, you're he can't so believe it. He goes, what? The? When I first did it, he was like, oh, here you go again. Because the co- it was only my family. We would joke around, and then he was like, what? Who? What? What are you doing? I was like, I got like three thousand followers. He goes, get out. You know, and then it was, you know. A big fucking deal. I mean, it I guess, is. You know, it right is a big deal. fucking deal. Hey, yeah. are you thinking? I mean, do you want to write a book? I mean, I think you I could write a book. Do, I'll write a book. I'll <laughs> whittle wood. Whatever it is that I have to do. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, but whatever happens, happens. You know, we're all here for the ride, right? Yes. So, why not? Now, tell me what happens when you go in the courtroom. Are people like, oh my God, Lisa Marie, I'm obsessed with No, you. I haven't been back because of my husband. I got to yes. take care of it. So I haven't been back yet. I got to wait for this round three of chemo to be over in two months. And then we got to take the next step, the next step. It's a race to save his life. So yes. we got to just figure out what we're going to do. You know? I mean, everybody has their own well, we're pray- No, but we're problems. praying. We're praying yeah. for Thank him. You. We are totally Thank praying you. for him. Thank you. Thank you. This. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now, how does it feel when you go to Instagram and you see like you have over 160,000 followers, you have like 100,000 followers on Insta- on uh, Facebook, and then you see people like Michael Rappaport and Jenny McCarthy and Heather McMahon following you? Like, is well, that I didn't know Michael Rappaport was following me. Thank you very much. I don't know how to check who's following me. Thank oh, you I'll much. show you. <laughs> yeah, we'll <laughs> teach you. <laughs> Who is the other one? Heather yeah, McMahon. Heather McMahon. She's hilarious. Very fine. Do you know Heather yes, McMahon? I know who she yes, is. of course. No, because I didn't know how to check. Wow. Yes. Go for me. How nice is that? Use the following me. Use to. That's cool. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Listen, you have like very well, you are very obviously you're very funny. You're one fine mommy. And um Thank you. 
and all these funny people, you know, who've been comedians their whole life are following you. So that's, yeah, I mean, this, yeah, this could be that. like your new career. Yeah. Could you, could you die? Could you imagine? <laughs> yes. By the way, I, I can, I actually can imagine. Tour. You I should just imagine get me to stand up tour. Well, that's we're back I mean, to normal. Yeah. So, yes, because you are just quintessentially yourself. And I think people love authentic and, and that's why people love you. Wow. That's crazy. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'm a big fan of you. I've watched since day one. The both that's, of you. That's so funny. Is that not hysterical? I know that Jer that's Jersey girls were crazy. And you're very right. popular I love with it. Jersey girls. Dina Mandel I love follows it. you and Dolores. Yes. I know Dolores loves you. You did an yeah, Instagram live Dolores. with Dolores, right? Yes. Yes, the both of you is now. I love it. I love the show, fans and stay one. I love it. Love all of it. This is amazing. It's just a great, it's just great. Everything that's coming of it is just great. It really I, is. It's just fun, exciting, and it's a great distraction. It really yes, is. Yes, which is yep. good. Well, you deserve it. You deserve all these good things. Thank now tell you. me about your parents. What are your parents saying about this? My mother's totally into it. She's like, oh, we're going to do my whatever. My father's like, yeah, you know what you got to do? He has a hundred ideas, but <laughs> he doesn't know. But I don't think like, they just, like, they just listen to the stories. My mother has Instagram, so she learns it. This is what you got. She calls me every morning. You have this many followers. Or if it goes up, you got this many followers. You know, it's cute. It's, it's fun. The whole thing is fun. It really is. It's great. It really is. It's amazing. There's women all over the world whose kids are like little lobster claws going in the dishwasher, trying to grab all the pieces. That, you know, every story you tell is so relatable. The engagement on your page is crazy because everyone goes through what you go through every day. Everybody writes underneath it. Same here, going through this. It's like so crazy that we so, all, it's a great page because we all became like friends. And it's yes. like all, everybody talking about real life. Yeah, it's great. It's it so is. great to see everybody get along. No nonsense. I mean, there's a couple of people that wish death on you, but that's fine. And then you <laughs> that's like the other one. Fuck them. I mean, yeah. these people, they they're they so know annoying. They don't bother me. I was built like steel. The things that were said to me as a child, you just, you just, it just bounces right off of you. It doesn't, doesn't I know. Me. I agree. Yeah, I feel the it. same way. It's like people say yeah. the sickest shit, right? Isn't it weird? I don't understand. But you know what you got to do? You got to feel sorry for them because they're looking for somebody to talk to. Oh, so it's you go true. out of your way to search your name. To write a comment of something so terrible, they're bored. You got to, they don't probably don't have anybody. So it's okay. I let That's them know. That's a bounce. nice way to think about it. You no, have to. Absolutely. Nothing insults me. Not one thing anybody's ever said insults me. I don't care. I don't care. That's so nice. How old are your kids? I have two 17 year old girls. Oh, and, wow. 17. Yeah. I didn't realize that. That's terrible. And my son's going to be three. <laughs> three. Uh, so wait, are the 17 yeah. year olds, are they going to be seniors this year? This year, they're going to be seniors this year in September. Yep. And my, well, we don't know what's going to happen with no. schools. So we don't know. And my son's going to be three next week. Oh, oh that's so nice. nice. Okay. Yeah. So that was a big gap. So all from this husband. Or no? My husband, my husband had the girls and I've been raising them since they're one years old. Oh, that's, and, yeah. wow. So you're also a stepmom. Well, they're your, they're your kids. I don't want to say yes, stepmom. Yes. Because I had the matter. same kind yeah. of situation. Same yes. As same myself. as yeah. Lexi. Same too. They've lived with us our whole lives. I'm with my husband for an extremely long time. And my son, we had three years ago. Isn't that so um, nice? Is your husband yes. older than you? No, same age. Same age as you, 38. Yes. 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 You look good. You look young. You do look young. Ooh, good for me. It's probably because we, you know, I guess the camera, but I'm not. I got, I don't know. I have wrinkles in places I didn't even know were available to have a wrinkle. I know. I oh, know, believe like, me. <laughs> I know. Thank God I got them fixed. I mean, that's the one thing when you're on social media, everyone will point out every one of your flaws. Oh. You know, yeah. it's absolutely yeah. crazy. And then when you yeah. fix them, then they're like, you look like a fake bitch. I know you can't. Yes. They go, what'd you do to you? What'd you do to this? What'd you do to that? I mean, why do you care? Why do you care? It is what it is. You're going to get hate and love every single day. But there's nothing I know. You can do. I know. If you're on somebody's tongue, that's fine. It's better. Exactly. More, more I know. credit people, than you think. People want, you know, it's good to have all the press and everything else, which is good. Yes. Yeah. I know, which yes. I love. So tell me, the twin girls, so tell me about, yes. do they bring home guys? Like, what, what's your theory on the dating with the girls? Do you, do you give no. the, the guys, no? I am a drill sergeant in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell you to leave. I will tell you when you can come. I will tell you when you can leave. And I'm very, the same way that I am is the same way I am with them because you can't let any, anything slide. You can't let anything slide with kids, I feel, today because 
there's two of them. And the two of them can get into a lot of trouble. A it's lot true. of trouble. It's true. Especially as girls and, you know, the whole, you know, like the guys. And, oh, my God. And, oh, my God. And, oh, my God. You know, it's a different world today. It's a different world. But I believe in being very straightforward. And that's it. And I am the way that I am with their friends. They walk in. I'll give you a whole rundown. They get embarrassed. I don't care. I'll tell you to leave if you're inappropriate. I'll tell you when you can stay. I'll tell you how long you can stay. You have to be that way in my head. You know? I, I agree with you. I, I think I that's agree. the way you have to be. Yeah. It has to be, you, you know, you to. have to be, and I, I, I feel this way, you know, I have other friends who I know like smoke pot with their kids and stuff. No, I, I would never not do something to. like that. No, you I'm always have to way. be the parent. You could be, you know, I'm not the friend. No. I mean, I'm no. close with my kids and people don't realize, I don't say it on the show, Lisa, but I have a 24 year old son who ha yes. wants nothing, you know, that I birthed, that people, you know, that he wants nothing to do with the show whatsoever. I mean, he's like a tyrant. Okay. He's, he's, he's very yeah, successful. He's I always say to him, I divorced my, uh, you know, I divorced a husband like you. He's, he's, so, he's so tough. But, yeah. you know. So they don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, he wants nothing to do with it, but we're really close. He's really bossy and everything else. But I always say to him, is like, there's certain things that I'm not, you know, I'm the cool mom, but I'm not that. I'm not going to be, I don't need to I be cool. I don't be need friend. to be all like cocktails with like my me. kid and all that shit. Yeah. I I'm here to it. make you feel I safe and protected. Kid. Right. Right? Right. Listen, my seven-year-old. Right. I feel, my opinion. My yes, opinion I feel like too. they don't have to like me. They don't have to like me. But you're going to listen to me. And that's all there is to it. Yeah, when because a friend. job as a parent is to protect them and make them feel safe and get them ready for the world. Yeah, absolutely. Right. My seven-year-old said to me the other night, actually, I love that dad's like a fun dad, but sometimes I just need him to be a little more appropriate. Like you, you know, you're a sturdy mom. Now I'm not going to take it that she meant I'm a sturdy mom. I'm going to take it that she meant a strict mom and she got a little mixed yes. up because sturdy yes. kind of pissed me off. But it's true. Like they don't always like me, but I am hardcore. But it yes. is hard because they are my kids. They've been my kids since my stepson came into my life when he was three months old. My stepdaughter was a month old, uh, a year old at that time. But it is hard to be a stepmom. I give so much credit to stepmoms. It is the hardest job in the world. Yes, yes. It is, it um, is. I had, I had the girls always, and there really wasn't any interference with my relationship. With yes, which was yes. good. Okay, we went through hard times just as kids because they are girls and they yes. are kids. And they're twins, which is double trouble. Yes. And, yes. and so, that's a big testament to your husband that you guys had full custody also. Yes. 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 So yeah. yeah, that's what it is. It's been, you know, it's been, it's a rough ride with kids. You got to buckle up or get the fuck out of the car because it's a <laughs> rough ride. A I know. rough ride with kids, but you got to do it. I know. I absolutely agree. Now tell me about, <clears throat> oh my God, my little voice, my little voice. Now tell me about <laughs> like work in the court system. Like, are you sometimes so tempted because you talk to die and you're funny. Are you sometimes so tempted to comment on cases? Are you like, holy shit? Because I know I you're not allowed that's to. That's the way that I am every single day. The it's judges. A, I'm not doing it to be like funny. I'm just being my way. I never knew people liked it. The only thing I don't do is curse terribly in front of my son because he's little. And I don't yes. do that in front of him. But everything else, I'm exactly the same way. I'm the same way. Like I'm all the time. The judges, I have great relationships with all them beautiful people. And I talk to them, you know, we text and we message. They're unbelievable people. And I'm just myself. Like I'm not like a classy professional. If that's what you're looking for, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't need, you know what? You don't need to be. I think, you know, yeah. that's not fun. No one wants someone uptight. Somebody wants somebody real and tell it like it is. Exactly. I think, yeah, that's, I've never I think that's much more refreshing nowadays. There's so many people who are fake and, and not real. And, and I don't like that. And pretend everything's yeah. perfect and doesn't say it the way it is. So. Yes. 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 Like when people say, oh my God, I think it all the time, but I don't say it. I'm like, why not say it? Why not? You know what I mean? Got one life to live. We could all be dead tomorrow. Tomorrow's not promised. Today's the present because it's a gift. So live your life to the fullest. You got to just be yourself. It's true. Yeah. That's Tell it. me, do you have a lot of your friends, the same friends since childhood? Yes, I have friends since childhood. My friend Natalie, she goes live with me sometimes. And just my, well, my sisters are my best friends and them too. My cousin Anthony, we're all very close. And we're all just, we just laugh at everything. It gives us new topics to talk about. 
new stuff. They own what's going on with these two today. They're like, get out of here, get out of here. I was like, I know. Like, it was like, it's, this is just a great distraction and it's just a step away from real life. And that's what's great. That is great. Yes. Tell me, like, what advice, because I think, what is it you think, because I think it's a therapeutic question, about your upbringing, um, the way your parents brought you up, that, that makes you take, listen, most women I don't think could be as strong as you, most people, any humans, that could take a situation, you know, that could devastate a lot of people that don't want to talk about it, that don't want to be out there, that couldn't, because I yeah. find a lot of, I could do a lot of humor myself. Same in a situation that's devastating and horrible. Yeah. Um, and people get mad at me because, you know, I, I always laugh or try and make light of something, you know, because that gets to. me through. Yeah, that that's gives, that's my coping mechanism. If you that's where I find there, my resilience. If you live in it, when he first got sick, we lived in it. We lived in it. It consumed us. But if you live in it, life is going on with or without you, like I said, so I couldn't live in it. I mean, yes, I break down. Yes, I cry. I vent about it. You know, you go through it. You're scared. You're worried. But I can't live in it because life is going on with or without me. You know what I mean? I can't do that because I have children. I have a life. And you can't, it, it's, easy, it's not easy to do sometimes, 95% of the time, but you can't let it consume you. So if you can make a minute video and all, everybody could forget about their problems for a minute, that's what you need. You need that because you can't live in, in depression and misery because it can consume you and take over your whole entire life. Exactly. It yeah. what, was it, what was it about your, do you think growing up? Was it that way? Were your parents that way? Did they? My father was extremely strict, extremely strict. Very Italian. My mother was very Italian, very, very strict. My mother's a neurotic and <laughs> neurotic like she used to wake us up at five o'clock in the morning to make the beds and then we could lay back on them and we would have to put our arms in our shirts because we weren't allowed to go under the covers again like real shit no like, real okay shit. that's yeah. so funny <laughs> yes i swear to god i swear to god she used to put coffee in the basement because she didn't want because we had an apartment we lived in the one you know floor my we had a little basement per coffee downstairs my father didn't want to hear it at four thirty in the morning but i became a lot like her i have a curing in my bathroom Okay. And I perk my, my first, yeah, I perk my first pot in the morning in my bathroom and I've become like her. I've morphed into her. <laughs> yeah, I morphed, but they were very strict going up. A lot of laughs, always joking around. Yes. But my father was no nonsense. He was, you're not getting away with shit. He was no nonsense. He knew where you were when you didn't even know you were going there. Like he was <laughs> very strict. Yes. Very strict. But we all had, we always laughed. Everybody always joked. Everybody always laughed. You, had, you know, we just always did. And then I became like this. Like, my sisters aren't like this. I'm like this. Like, they're total, we're all total opposites. But it's great. Just, to, you know, got to laugh in life. I can't take anything too seriously. You have to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Especially, you know, with also what's going on in your personal life, in, in, the, in the world of COVID, mm -hmm. in the world of, you know... Uh, this upside everything. down everything. This there. upside down yes. world that everything is going on. And even prior to this, when yeah. I think it was very depressing for people to go on social media and see all these perfect people with these perfect fucking kitchens with no pots in them, no stains it's on their white bullshit. Jeans. What bullshit? I went no to a restaurant the other day and a fucking ketchup smear and a snot stain on my shirt before we'd even been there five minutes. It's not my house looks life. like it just got raided. My house looks like we just had a no-knock search warrant, and it's just got raided. <laughs> Since the minute my son woke up, it's like there's nothing normal. And then when he goes to bed, you do it's the groundhog's day every day, doing the same it's thing true. to clean it up. I doing the it. Same thing. Well, yeah. I just get obsessed with cleaning up at night because it's the one thing in life I can control. So if there's I'm one animal like missing yeah. from my farm at night, if the horse has gone rogue, shit gets very shit real. Gets very real. I have to like go through the whole house to find that horse because yep. at this point is all we could control. It's true. Okay. It's true. Listen, I, I agree. I mean, I feel like during this quarantine, I got a lot done in my house, but it was so funny because everybody's used to seeing everybody's every housewife, like on my show, their house, perfect. This, that we moved into this old house and everybody gave me so much love. I'm like, that's not real life. You don't move into an old house that you're that's redoing right. and everything's right. perfect. And everyone's like, you're right. disgusting. What does your housekeeper do? I was yeah, like, live in those closets. How could you live in those closets, closets in your room? I'm like, easy. shithead. I moved into a 110 year old house. That's what it takes. I don't, you know, my husband is, you know, he does do contracting work, but he does everybody else's house first. Yeah. Lose on. Yeah. Just kiss. Yeah. I know. I, I need to get my house needs an overhaul. 
but it is what it is. It'll, you know, it is what it is. And there's priorities in life. And I think people, and I love that you just call it out and you say it. And that's what, that's what makes it funny. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, you have to fucking laugh because people take things way too seriously. There's no joking anymore. There's no, there's nothing anymore. Everything has to be very serious and very just, it's not, it's not, we could all be dead tomorrow. God forbid. You got to live each I day. Know, like I know. I know. And I think, and I think comedians are really coming under fire, which I is think upsetting. It's the hardest thing to be in the world right now as a comedian. You can't say anything without coming with, under yeah, fire. Nothing can be funny. You can't anymore. say anything as a person. I no. know. As a person. I know. You there's the story. There's as, the, you can't ask for a straw anymore because they got to be paper straws. Like, come on. I know. I know. You, know, you can't do anything. I know the paper straw. My girlfriend travels with the plastic ones in her bag, and we immediately switch them out. <laughs> so do I. I mean, so do I. Because the paper, because the way. yeah, we have because the paper straws immediately fall apart. Yeah. Then I paper in my mouth. It's You're like a disaster. The You're eating the straw. You're eating it. My You're favorite thing is that that became the vehicle for climate change. That the paper straw was the one thing that was going to change the world. Not the pollution. Not the flights. Yes. Not China. Right. Not the right. Paper fucking right. Straw. Yep. Not the extra extra packaging and a Reese's pieces, just the straw. That's it. Not know? the Amazon box that comes like with ten times the packing yes. for one thing this big. Yeah, yeah we're gonna straw. yeah we're gonna take bubbles. a stand, and it's gonna be about the straw. Yeah, <laughs> just I mean, I know. Seriously, just what we needed. Just what we needed. I know. We There's so many up. things to take a stand. I know. I, people can make me fucking nuts. Insane. So Lisa, <laughs> yeah, you know, on the show. Yeah. Well, I know your big girl panty moment, but yes. I'm just, I, I'm going to ask anyway, just because there's so many, there's so many things that we say on the show. And I feel like you are just the epitome of like a caviar, caviar dreamer. Dream. You put it out there. Yeah. yeah. So impressive. You are you're so, so inspired. Thank you. You are so, oh, ins- thank you, you are. No, yes. but you're so inspirational to so many. And I want everybody just to follow you and everything oh. else. So I'm just saying, it's Thank like you. I always say, oh, this was my big girl panty moment. I know your big girl panty moment, but tell us, you know, when you had to pull up your big girl panties and know like, you know what, I got to do something different. I got to just like put it out there. What was your big girl panty moment? When he was, when we when I started the page, when he was on chemo, because I lost yes. it when he got sick. I lost it completely when he got sick. I was a wreck. And thank God my sister told me what to do. Like she led me, let's do this. And it made me just forget about it. And I know what the reality of the situation could be. And I know how bad it could be. But it doesn't mean I forget about it. No. no. It, just, it just makes you deal with it. Because it could, you know, we know what the reality could be. Smoked too many people, you know, were scared, petrified. I can't imagine it. Everybody in the world that goes through it can't imagine it. But it's life. And I have to just... I can't live in it because if I live in it, I'm going to lose it. That's why when you did the thing with the capes, the heroes, like the brave guy, you had, you had me as your number one fan. When oh, you, thank oh. you. Thank you. No, no, I'm serious. Like that was the most, that's what it's all about. And then you, no, see, it is. Go, yeah. you see the kids that are sick. Yeah. I don't know how children go through what he's going through. He's a grown man, but the kids that go through it and you're just like, wow, times could be, you know, it's just a lot. So again, it this page makes you forget about your reality and you have fears and everybody that's depressed, we all talk on the page and we just get through it because if you don't laugh, what are you going to do? You're going to cry. Yeah, exactly. And that's what it is. Right. It's exactly. not going to change the reality when people go, oh, some people go, oh, well, you're going through this and you're doing this. That's right. I'm doing this because that's I'm not right. going to, I know what the fucking reality is. I'm not an asshole. We speak to doctors. They tell us what the reality of this situation is, could be and how long it could be and everything else. We know it. But tomorrow's going to happen. The next day's going to happen. God forbid something happens. The next day's going to happen. So why not get some humor out of it? Because there's nothing else you could do. You are so yeah. amazing. I want you, so you so must fun. write a book. Yes. Listen, if you want to fucking get somebody to write my book, go ahead. What am I going to write a book with? My pen and paper? No, no. <laughs> we'll get you a ghostwriter. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to, no, seriously. Yeah. I'm going to really? find, I'm going to introduce you to um, my book agent. Yes. Good for me. Did you die? Listen to me. That happens. Please, I would love anything to happen. That would be I unbelievable. I can't because, imagine. Yeah. No, because I think your story is amazing. So I think you're inspiring. very, very inspirational. Um, Thank you. No, it's true because true. so many people, you know, act like everything's okay, are private, 
wouldn't take a situation like this, you know, or fall apart or and, fall and apart. really struggle to like deal with what yeah. become the painful new normal and right. really do, like struggle to find that sense of humor again. And I think that your you resilience is so incredible. I think you have, it's funny, we say something on the show, what percentage do you think you are delusional to determined? And we always ask our guests, I think you're a hundred percent resilient. Yes, I mean, you're, like, you're, you're, I no, you have no determined. Yeah, yeah, like yes, this. like you. I think you're 100 percent determined and 100 percent resilient. Yes, you I'm don't flattered. have it. I really am. No, yeah. you are. You're great. I'm flattered. You're thank amazing. you so much. I'm flattered. Thank you. So we use. I love you guys. Been a big fan since I day one. I want to introduce her to Connor. Yeah, I'm going to introduce you. Um, just give me like till next week, yeah. and then we'll do an intro. I'll uh, um, we'll do an email introduction. You will, uh, Lisa. Yeah, I do. So tell everybody oh, thank where you. to find you. One funny mommy. One, one funny, funny M O M M Y. Yeah. Everybody that's it. follow <laughs> her on Instagram. Ah, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. One, Funny, funny mommy, mommy because she is hilarious. Follow her life. She Aww, just thank you guys. Break your spirits every oh, single day, every day. Literally, when the change, the change. I love you. When you saw the McDonald's menu change, I don't know how many times we watched that in the office. Me and Lindsay, we were like, no one's. That seen. was fucking crazy. I never saw that. I felt on it. I felt on it. I felt very. I felt like it was boring. <laughs> I never saw that before. I Learned love something it. new every day. It's funny. I you remind me of my friend, so much. Lisa Rosie. Yes. I have another friend, Lisa. I haven't seen her while she moved. Her name's, I call her Lisa Rosie because she used to have a company called, her name's Lisa Nardone. But it's funny. You remind me a lot of her, which I love. I just love that so much. Well, thank you so much. Thank and you. I love you. Uh, thank love you. you. I appreciate it. We'll be in it. touch next week. Love you guys. I just want you guys to have a healthy, yes. peaceful weekend yes. with lots of laughs and love. Thank you. Love. Okay. Same to you. I love you, love you guys. Thank America. you so love much. You. And we'll talk next week. Uh, thank you. Love you. Bye. 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 She is a little doll. I'm telling you. I When I first came across that page, I guess it was early on, and she like written to me on something I'd done, and we connected. I am so impressed constantly because to go through pain and suffering when you have kids, especially, I can't even imagine. And she yeah. brightens everybody's day. She really is the epitome of a caviar dreamer. Yes. Lisa Marie is so inspiring. I just, you know what? It's just like anybody who could take the worst diagnosis that your husband could have, that she could wake up every day, you know, go out of herself, live in the moment. She's so herself. I just, you know, I'm crying. I'm laughing. She just makes me feel good. She's so fat. I'm going to start crying. Oh. I don't want you to start crying. But she's so fabulous. And she says, use. Who? Yes. I love anybody who says use. <laughs> you know, Joe says all the time I correct him. I'm never correcting him again. It's I so adorable. She, says, yes. she really, I mean, and I think that the refreshing, wonderful spirit that she brings to every single person. She is authentically who she is. She comes through the camera every time with that, like with that accent and her stories about her kids and the husband wanting the special meals made. And when he brought, she uh, had a huge vat of olive oil. That was her new clutch bag, you know, just so many things that so many people can relate to. And her exactly. page truly is a place of positivity and there aren't many purely positive places you can yes. be anymore. You know, I agree. my therapist put me on a news diet because I was going into a COVID uh, poly political Yes, it's black just hole. like all, you know, there's so many things, and I'm sorry, the media is edited. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Well, unfortunately, I, I said this to you yesterday, the media now has made things like Black Lives Matter and COVID about politics, and right? Yes, and it's not. And it's it's, not, a it's hum about human life. Yes, it's a humanitarian issue. It's not about left and right. I agree. And it's, it's just gotten too far and, and I can't take it. I literally can't take it. Exactly. It's like, will you wear your mask? Won't you wear your mask? No, we shouldn't even be talking about it. If you talked more about the actual stories of people whose families suffered through COVID, everyone would wear a mask. It's true. It's not about being a Democrat or Republican. It's no. about just being a, a good, good responsible person. person. Jesus, people. Wear your damn mask. I have to wear a damn bra. I put that on Instagram the other day. You know what's uncomfortable? A bra. But if I didn't wear a bra, you would trip over my tits. I would damage someone. Exactly. And so, it, you know, it would not be good. So I wear a fucking bra. I wear a mask. It's true. Just, Just wear one. Yeah.
Exactly. So what are you guys longer. bitching about? Doctors have done it for years. Okay? That's Stop. Right. Cut the shit. All right. But on that note, we have great guests coming up for you again. I want everyone to follow One Funny Mommy. And we have more great guests coming up. We have Jacqueline Hergott, who owns a fabulous PR and talent agency. Yes. And we could tell people how to get into that business, which is so great. We're going to have Patty Stanger who yeah. I just love so much. She's Millionaire a matchmaker, of lots of fun. We have a lot of good guests coming up, people. So yes, keep, keep listening and keep dreaming, Caviar Dreamers. So every Wednesday, we're going to be on YouTube and we are wherever you find your podcast fix, Apple, Spotify, wherever that is. Mm -hmm. And it's at Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. See you. Keep dreaming, keep, dreamers. Keep dreaming, dreamers. I am the one.